Hello, good afternoon. It is the 1st of March today. So for everybody who may or may not be aware, this is actually Pancake Day. Now, Pancake Day is something that, although I would now class myself as being pagan, I do still follow. And I also still follow Lent. Now, for a number of years, I did actually used to go to what was called Lent groups with my local church and community centres. So this year, I am looking at doing something a little different. One of the things I also used to do with my friends was what we call a Lent party. And everyone who attended those would know very well that I was very strict about them either giving up something for Lent or trying to achieve something within the next 40 days that they would like to achieve. Now, for myself, personally, my dream would be to get my book finished, but I know realistically that's not likely to happen within the next 40 days that I've been working on this book for 20 years of my life. It's practically been my life's ambition to get it finished. But due to having a severe dyslexia, I have really, really struggled with the spelling, the grammar and the punctuation. So I've had to rely on friends and family to help me to get this book into a readable capacity. And as you're aware, if you rely on your friends and family to help you do this, it is voluntary. So I could send them 20 to 40 pages and it might take them a year or two years to read them. So. I've been very patient. We are hopefully on my last draft of my book this year, fingers crossed. So I'm painstakingly trying to finish the other two. So my books are Pure Light, Pure Sword and Grace's Choice. So fingers crossed I should get those finished within the next couple of years if everything goes well. Or at least one of them, which would be my ideal dream. So for Lent, instead of trying to stress about trying to get my book finished, I will endeavour to try and read a few pages from my book that I've wrote. And if anyone could give me any feedback on that, that would be fantastic. And the other thing that I am looking at doing is reading what is known as the Complete After Collection series by Anna Todd. Now, I have already explained that I have severe dyslexia, so trying to read one, two, three, four, five books in 40 days is going to be a real mission for me. Now, I have actually recently seen the movie, which is called After, and I really enjoyed it. It was on Netflix. I believe it's still on Netflix. So if you haven't seen the film, I would recommend seeing it. But if you can read the book first, do so. With other movies that have been film, been book adaptations, sorry, or series, I have tried to read the books first. It was probably because when I was younger, you know, you'd have to go to the cinema. You didn't have things like Netflix or Amazon Prime or any of that. So. One of my favourite books that I did read before watching it in the cinema was Tracy's Chevalier's Girl with a Pearl Earring, which, when the movie came out, actually had stars like Scarlett Johansson in. Now, I love that book. Tracy Chevalier is actually one of my favourite authors. And if the book The Lady and the Unicorn could ever be made into a film that would be something that I would either want to be involved in or if you know I was given permission it would be that kind of book that I would love to see on the silver screen. Now I'm a huge fan of Outlander I haven't read any of the books to that uh, I never read the Fifty Shades of Grey series I've never even watched the films and so when I watched after the movie it reminded me of a movie called Cruel Intentions, which stars Reese Witherspoon. And if anyone is around the age of 40, like myself, you would know the movie Cruel Intentions. So in the movie, there is also an actress called uh, Selma Blair, who is in 
the after movie. And the moment I saw her in that film, straight away, that was the first film that came to my mind was Cruel Intentions. There are bits in the film of after that reminded me straight away of Sebastian's character. And there were bits in the film where um, Annette Hargrave reminded me of Tess in the movie After. So if you've ever seen the film Cruel Intentions, then I would probably say that the movie After is something you may or may not enjoy if you are, like myself, a little bit more mature. The other thing it vaguely reminded me of was Fifty Shades of Grey. I've never read the books, but my sister's read them. She's seen the movie. She's told me about it. So there were certain things in the book that reminded me, sorry, in the film, which is obviously a book adaptation of Fifty Shades of Grey. I did a little bit of research online about the book. It's got a bit of um, mixed views. But for a book to be able to be selling over 11 million copies, the author can't be going wrong. So if you're into something like Fifty Shades of Grey or teen romance, I, when I say teen romance, I'd probably say over the age of 14. I don't think these books would be suitable for 10 to 12 year olds to be reading. But until I've read them, I don't know. So this isn't a paper promotion, by the way. Um, I just wanted to add that in. So the books in the After series are, I'll try and read them without my glasses, are Before, which I believe is a prequel, After, After We Collide, After We Fall, and After Ever Happy. I believe now that all of these books have actually been turned into a movie. I'm not 100% sure on that. I have tried to find them online. But I know that the movie After is on Netflix at the moment. I've probably watched it about three times. And the reason I've done that is because the gentleman who plays Hero finds his name is. He has got one of those voices that if somebody is going to read to you, they're the type of person you want to read to you. I've had people read to me in the past. I have been to reading clubs and book clubs. And if you've got that kind of voice that people want to hear, then I would say apply to do audio reading. There are very few people out there, I believe, that have the correct kind of voice for that type of work. I know that Stephen Fry, for example, has been very popular with the Harry Potter series. So again, he's got one of those voices. I have heard, I think it was Anthony Hopkins did the poem If by Roger Kipling. So again, if people are going to be reading aloud, having clear diction is very important. And I know this is something I myself don't always have. So as of today, I am going to go on my good read page and I am going to click that I am aiming to read all five of these books within 40 days. Realistically, I can't see that happening. I haven't even looked to see how big the text is. But I will probably start, to be honest, with before. I don't think it really matters with a series like this whether you read them in order or not. With my book, I've made sure that isn't always the case. And if I can just carefully take one of them out of the box. Oh, this is the worst bit. I have to try and get one out and then the rest will just kind of fall on you. Just have a look at the... Whoa, straight away I know I'm going to struggle with this just by looking at the um, the size of the um, the writing. I don't know whether you can see if I try and get a little bit closer. That is the font size. If I knew the font size for this book was going to be small, to me this is small, um, and because of my dyslexia I'm really going to struggle. So I would have gone for a large print. I don't know whether this collection does come in a large print. It's something I'll look into, and if it does, I'll let you know. 
I believe I may be able to also get it on Audible. Um, so again, I believe I might be able to get a 30 day trial with them. So I'll see if it is on Audible just in case I do struggle with the literature, literary, can never say that word, text. But I'll try and read the blur, as it's called on the back of the book, before that I will try and read first. So it says, before Harden met Tess, so they are the two main characters of the book, Tess and Harden. He was a raging storm. During those first moments they met, after they got together, the world would never be the same. And then it says, sometimes I read, try and read it before I read it aloud, so my apologies. Um, Pardon and Tess says, dramatic love affair became a vortex pulling in everyone around them. For the first time, these others are given voices. As they appear before, during and after events in the original after novel. So to be honest, I probably not read this one first then. I think it's probably going to be best to read after first. So get yourself familiarised with the characters. After them, Pardon's account of his encounter is with Tess, which will change what you thought you knew about this brooding boy and the angel who loved him. And it's got um, comments from well-known magazine Cosmopolitan. So again, if it's something like Cosmopolitan, I would definitely say that this is not really, although I would class it as a teen novel, for somebody under the age of like 15, I wouldn't expect somebody younger than that to be reading Cosmopolitan. Maybe they do, I don't know. Um, and then there's uh, Fangirlish, which I've never heard of probably something in the UK, in the United States and that's normal and the quote that that's normal has put is the Mr Darcy and Liz, Liz Bennett of our times so straight away a quick spoiler alert and I do apologize I should have mentioned that sooner is that in the book they do actually I don't know what it is about Americans they always seem to quote books that are produced by UK authors so with this book, um, it's Pride and Prejudice, it's Wuthering Heights. So if you've not read Pride and Prejudice, I've never read Pride and Prejudice, so I'm born in the UK. I have never read Pride and Prejudice in my life. I know the story, but again, I've never really sat down and watched the movie. And also Wuthering Heights. I know the story of Wuthering Heights, I've seen one of the films. But again, it's not one of those books that I've physically sat down and read. I could probably hear my friends screaming at me right now saying, What? How could you've never read Wuthering Heights? You took me to Yorkshire. We went to a tea shop where they were actually playing the black and white film version of her favourite book. So I do apologise that, again, I think one of the things, I think it was the series Princess Diaries series, where Julie Andrews' character is the Queen of Genovia, she tries to say to her granddaughter, Amelia, to become a lady, you will read the following. And she gets her to quote famous poets. She gets her to read the classics written by classic authors of our time in the UK, that UK people, as far as I'm aware, very few of us have actually read, the, read them because they're not on the national curriculum. I know on the national curriculum in America, they may read things like the Scarlet Letter, 
because I watched the movie Easy A. And again, things by Hemingway. But in the UK, as part of the English language, as part of education in English literature, we do not read anything other than Shakespeare. I've never been expected to read anything by the Bronte sisters or Jane Austen. Again, Charles Dickens is another one that I know a little bit about. But in English, unfortunately, these aren't things that we actually cover. So people may be aware of them, but they're not things we know. One of the things my friend did when he actually did A-level English was he read The Handmaid's Tale, which has now become this series. It's going to be a series four coming out soon. And I remember him telling me about it when he was reading it for A-level English. And I'd already seen the movie. So when the series came out, I couldn't wait for the series to come out because I already knew so much about the book. But I've never really sat down and read the book from front to back. So again, it's one of those books that I will be hoping to try and read at some point. But because I love the series so much, I don't think I would want to read the book. Because I know that the book isn't going to be like the series. So again, it's one of those things, if when there's a film adaptation or a series adaptation of a book that you really, really love, Sometimes it's just best to stay away. <laughs> so here you have it. I will endeavour to try and read five books in 40 days. So if you like what I'm saying, I apologise for the waffling, then please stay tuned and thank you for your time.